Um, just a little bit of history on our firm. We're just two blocks down the street, and we're five years old this month. Uh, we started in 2006. There were five of us on some cardboard boxes and some chairs, and now there's over 100 of us. And we started a firm completely dedicated to performance architecture. So I'm going to talk to you about su sustainable buildings today. We have cities in China that we're planning. We have small projects. We have big projects. But I bought some big ones to show you. Um, this picture um, actually represents an idea in a book I read called Machine in the Garden by Leo Marx. And this morning, Julian asked me, he said, uh, you're an architect? I said, yeah. He said, so when you were growing up, you played a lot with Legos, didn't you? And I, I said, actually, I, I kind of did, but I didn't really have a lot of Legos because I actually grew up in Jamaica. And I grew up on this little island, and I never saw a building over 11 stories until I was about 10 or 11 years old. And this view kind of represents what I grew up with. And Leo Marx talks about the idea of the pastoral ideal and nature and hearing the whistle blow and realizing that technology was invading that space and it was never going to be the same. And when I was a kid, I used to stand on the hills and kind of walk around and look up in the sky and see all these planes going all over this place. And I always wondered where all those people were going. And uh, when I was 11, I moved to Toronto and then came here to go to college, and I never went back. Um, I want to talk to you about performance. An igloo is probably the most basic architecture you could find that is purposely formed for its use. It's great for its inhabitants. It's great for its environment. It's great for wind and sun. It's even good for those pesky neighbors that stop by every once in a while. Um, but these are the big guys that cause the worst carbon emissions in the world. This building I designed when I was at Skid Moorings in Merrill about seven years ago. It's called Pearl River Tower. It's in Guangzhou, China. It's about 72 stories, 2 million square feet. It's a headquarters office building and was designed to be the world's first net zero energy building. And basically, it uses um, or creates as much energy on an annual basis as it uses. Um, that's the first time that's ever been done. Uh, the building was formed to move wind through its mechanical floors. You see those slots? There are turbines in there that help generate power. It's got photovoltaics on the side, so it's protected from the east and west and harvests the sun and the wind from the south. And it's almost finished and will open at the end of this year. In 2006, we started our own firm, as I said, just down here. And we entered a competition for Mazdar headquarters, which is in Abu Dhabi. It's 155 international entries. And we found out later, after we had won, that the reason we got invited was because the assistant went on the web and looked for architects and looked for A. Adrian Smith plus Gordon Gill architecture. And that's how we got invited. Pure luck. Uh, she didn't know who we were. The directors didn't know who we were. There were 155 entries, and we ended up winning this. And we ended up designing the world's first positive energy building. This building actually creates more energy than it uses on an annual basis. It's seven stories tall. It has, the, thanks. <laughs> it's, it's got the world's largest photovoltaic array on its roof, about 300,000 square feet. Uh, it uses an indigenous characteristic of wind cones and wind towers to create spaces like the one you see up on the screen. And it's not just about the buildings. The whole reason we do this is because we're trying to make people live better lives, be more comfortable, and work better, be uh, more productive. And so we actually have the ability in our office to measure you and your comfort in your seat in this space. And because of your dress, whether you're wearing t-shirts and shorts or a suit, we can kind of estimate how long you're going to be comfortable in that seat in this temperature. Um, we create spaces with landscape architects that have different types of species of fruit and plants for the people that live in the buildings. And after we did that, we got asked to work on Willis Tower, which was Sears Tower right around the corner. And the client came to us and asked us to design a net zero hotel for them. And we said, well, that's an interesting question, but we'd rather look at the existing building. And what we found out was by looking at the energy saved in that building, we could do a lot of good in the city. We took out 68 million kilowatt hours per year out of that existing building. And to just kind of tell you what that means, you see the slide, the stuff on the right side, that's the equivalent. 
And we're being a little conservative because, to be honest, it's really about two to four times that. The third one down is 10,000 single family homes in Chicago. In other words, you take that energy out of that building and you can take 10,000 single family homes in Chicago off the, block, off the grid completely. That means they don't use any, any energy at all. So what, we're, what we found out was that we could tap into buildings like this that already exist, harvest their power, and shift it across town to somebody else. We can do it through daytime and nighttime use because office buildings are active in the day, homes are active at night. And we found that we could talk to the utility companies and come up with this idea of basically harvesting what we already have and moving it around in kind of intelligent ways. We then took that idea and took it to the entire city. And we wrote a script in our office for 450 buildings in the loop to look at how they behaved simultaneously. And this is a little clip of this script. And you guys do this all the time. For me, this is new. <laughs> but basically, for the first time, we're able to look at every building in the city simultaneously and run scenarios for water, energy, electricity, gas, anything you can imagine, different types of glass, different kinds of stone, and tell you how much carbon it was going to save, what it was going to cost, what the return on investment was going to be, and what each building, how each building affected the other. Because we think that everything we do matters and affects everybody else. So we don't look at things in a kind of silo. For us, it's a very pluralistic approach to solving problems. And what we found out was that we could increase the density of the city by 30% and still reduce carbon by 50%. So cities are good. Your city is good, and it's getting better. We need to make it healthier. And you can help with this, because around the world, we see that there are 60 million people moving to urban centers every year. 60 million. And they have to live somewhere. And so we have started our next study on the relationship between different types of buildings and carbon. So what's the relationship between a super, super tall building? I'll show you one in a second. Versus a super tall building, something around 80 stories. Versus mid-rise, low-rise houses, suburban living. What's the relationship in carbon footprint between all of those? Because we guys to get to do some things like this all the time. And I'm going to leave you with this one because I'm almost out of time. But this is Kingdom Tower. And I don't know if you've seen this before, but we're really proud to tell you that we won the competition for the world's tallest building about a year ago. And uh, yeah, we're really proud of that. You know, uh, we're just a bunch of guys and girls just down the street uh, having a lot of fun on the 23rd floor. And um, it's amazing that uh, these kids who are just coming out of school just like you can accomplish these kinds of things. Um, this building, if you can imagine, is over 1,000 meters tall. That is, if you took Sears and put another Sears on top of it, you'd be close to the height of this building. It's more than 160 stories. Um, and what we did was we looked at its efficiency and performance in terms of its shape and its form. And we basically drew up an idea for making the most efficient form we could for this super tall building. Um, I'm going to skip ahead so I can show you the animation. This is the view looking up. That's the view looking down. And yes, those are people outside on that deck. Don't be afraid. <laughs>
And I just want to tell you, if I can grow up in Jamaica and do that, almost anybody can do anything. Have a great day.